Okay, so this is, we'll call it part two. Um, I just wanted to make this video and show you because I got everything cut out. So it was kind of hard for me to kind of like explain to y'all from the first video what I had going on. So I wanted to make this video so you guys can really see what I was talking about. So, excuse me, I got a mess, got a mess underneath here. Um, but you can see what I, from the first video to this video, what I was talking about um, as far as cutting that whole section out and then cutting, I went on the inside with my, um, my uh, angle grinder right here and uh, cut the inside line too and then cut it across. So this is what I was telling you guys about the difference between a convertible frame and a hard top frame. So if you see this right here, this is actually a hard top frame that they added the, this on afterwards. Or possibly, yeah, that's how they do it because, uh, sorry, this phone is acting up. Um, so anyway, you can see that this part of the frame came all the way in and was welded to the inside of the frame. Then you see this is the C-channel part of the frame that I was telling you guys about, uh, about. And then this is just the extra structure that they welded on. You can see from that, that angle right there, that's the extra structure that they welded on. And in this section right here, it would have been there um, because like I showed you guys before, uh, the uh, holes, I know this video is kind of messed up. Just bear with me, I'm sorry. It's tight up under this car. But this is where, you know, the cross member bolts in. But you can see all the way down the frame, if I can get y'all a good picture, all the way down the frame, it's boxed in completely all the way on both sides. So you can see on that side as well, it's boxed in all the way down the frame. So that's the extra support I was telling you guys about um, with the, T, uh, the convertible top versus the hard top cars. Uh, so once I cut this apart, excuse me, once I cut this open, I was able to see inside of here and see that this piece goes all the way in and welds in. Well, this piece was rusted out too. And uh, I tried to save the chunk, but anyway, I cut that chunk out because it had a big rust hole right here in the center. So that's structure as well. So I couldn't, you know, replace this part right here without replacing this. So it's gonna be like a two step, three step process, I guess you could say. So first of all, I'll cut me a patch in here, bevel, bevel my frame down a little bit. I started a, a little bit, but it's kind of hard to get in there, but I, I started beveling a little bit, got it cleaned up. Now make me a piece in here. It's got a slight curve to it. So I'll take a piece of 3 16 First, I'll take my paper like I always do and get my, get my size cut out. Then, you know, use that as my template that I'll make that slight curve in it uh, with, you know, a sledgehammer or whatever in the vise. Just put that slight curve in it and get it in there. And I'll weld that all the way around solid. So that's going to put the structure back into this piece. And now that leaves me being able to come up here in the top. So you can see I got it, I got it cut pretty straight. Uh, my piece that I cut out here, I got it cut straight, pretty straight. And I got it cut pretty straight across here. So I still need to get up in here and grind all of this down on the inside of the frame really good. Uh, clean all of that up. But then my next patch is going to come from the corner right here. And it's gonna come all the way across and it's gonna fill that whole section in like the piece I cut out that was up there. And it tied in right here. You can see it's still a little bit of weld left. I gotta grind that a little more. So basically it's just gonna come straight across into there and it ties into this piece and it's gonna tie all of this together. And like I said, I'm gonna weld from right here. So with my weld, by me opening this whole part of the frame up, when I put that patch in there, I'll be able to weld this seam here all the way down then come on the inside like this and weld this whole seam all the way across from the bottom. So it's gonna be completely welded. It's just welded on the inside instead of the outside, which sucks, you know, but this is the kind of repair that I have to make right here. And uh, I'll do my best to try to get some seam sealer after I put that up in there and try to put some seam sealer on the top side where it's not welded at. And if you turn your welder up hot enough and you bevel both sides and you crank that welder up as you're welding, and you're burning through just like if I was burning from the top side down, it's gonna close that gap up up there. It's gonna, that weld is gonna penetrate and it's gonna seal that gap up up there, but there's no way for me to kind of like treat it. Um, so I try to get, you know, maybe a some kind of spatula or a stir stick, a paint stir stick with some 
uh, seam sealer on it and try to just coat the top of that that uh, weld up there. So, you know, just to prevent it from rust. You can see the floorboard needs some repair and stuff, but he's just trying to get this car a step at a time. So anyway, I'll do that just to try to prolong it and, and you know, keep it as weather tight as possible. So once I get that piece in there, like I said, then I can make my piece here and my piece that goes along the bottom. And I might make this in one section, just bend it in the brake, bend the 90 on there. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna come in and swoop and, and get tied into like right about here in this patch. Cause that's how it was on the, on the previous repair or actually it came all the way up in here somewhere on the previous repair uh, part of the frame. So I'll go ahead and make that little bend in there and bring it up and then I'll fill that gap in at the bottom and weld it all solid all the way around. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video and show you guys because you know, it's, it's different techniques. Like I said, I'm not making a whole lot of money on this. Don't get me wrong. Um, all he really wanted me to do was just throw some plates on there and you know, strengthen the frame up. But that's just not the kind of work that I do. That's not the kind of um, product that I'm putting out. Uh, so, you know, I wanted to go ahead and do it the right way. Like I said, I'm not making a lot of money on the job but my reputation, my, my business name, all of that. If this car goes to another shop down the line, I don't want them to be like, because I get stuff in, I'd be like, damn, well, why didn't they just do this? They just slap some patches on there. And by this being an old car, he's gonna restore it slowly, but surely, you know, I'm sure it's gonna go to a lot of other shops and I want him to be able to be proud to say, oh yeah, I had a patch, you know, I had a spot in my frame right there it was rusty, man, and this guy, over there at Midwest Customs, man, he did a hell of a job. He cut it all out and, and, you know, patched it all up inside to outside and you can't even tell. So, you know, that's the kind of, that's the kind of quality of work that I like to put out. That way I know, you know, when this car goes to a future shop or even if he gets up under here and he looks at it himself, you know, one day when he got the car on jack stands or whatever, he can look and say, you know what, I got a nice repair done and, I know that this is gonna last for the lifetime of, you know, him, the car, whatever. So this part two, uh, it's late. Like I said, I'm in Dayton, Ohio. So it's probably like one o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock, 12.31 in the morning, something. So this time change got me all messed up too. It gets super dark early, but I got all of that done for the night. Tomorrow I'll come in and start uh, mocking up my pieces, getting them cut up and everything. And uh, I'll make another video once I get everything welded and show you guys how it turned out.